What's up y'all? Alvin here, Fly Fishing for Bass Part 3. Today we talk techniques. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> Alright, so first up, casting. And like I said in video number one, which you can watch with that link right there, casting is very important in fly fishing for bass. Mostly accuracy. Bass are going to be hiding near some type of structure. A rock, a log, undercut bank, whatever. Fly fishing for bass is really a game of inches. The closer you can get that fly to the structure, the more fish you're gonna catch. Pretty simple. You just gotta get it close. You can't be scared to lose a few flies because if you are, you're never gonna get it close enough. The thing is, luckily, most of the time we're using fairly heavy tippet, so most of the flies that you get snagged, you will be able to get back. Okay, so a couple of things about the actual cast itself. Most of the time, we're trying to deliver the tightest loop we possibly can. And still, that's the case when bass fishing most of the time. But occasionally, if you're trying to throw a big bulky or heavy fly, it's actually gonna be easier to open your loop up a little bit and just kind of flop that fly out. It's not pretty, but it'll get the job done. Another thing that's kind of tough with a big bulky bass fly is roll casting. They just don't roll cast very well. Now you do have to use the roll cast occasionally when you're fly fishing for bass, just to get the fly away from the boat or get the fly away from you so that you can make an actual back cast. But more often than not, you're gonna really wanna make a powerful back cast and really punch that fly out towards your target. Something that's gonna help you punch that fly out towards your target is using your thumb using that thumb on that forward cast to really put some pressure on that rod and really load that rod. Sometimes when fishing with lighter rods, you can use your index finger to kind of point where you want the fly to go. And that does help sometimes with accuracy, but with a rod in a six, seven, eight weight range, like we use a lot of times for bass fishing, that thumb is just gonna give you a lot more power and just as much accuracy for the most part. Speaking of fingers, not just the thumb, but this one's pretty important, and so is this one. The reason is, when you make that final presentation and you lay that line out on the water, you don't wanna just toss it out there and let go of your line. What happens when you make that cast and let go of your line, then you have to reach up and grab that line, and there's just a couple of seconds there where you don't have any control of it, the line is slack, and a lot of times the bass will smack that fly as soon as it hits the water. So, you wanna use two hands, and what you wanna do is when you make your final presentation, you're gonna let that line slip through your fingers and then as soon as that fly hits the water, boom, I pinch it and I pull all my slack out. If a bass hits it, as soon as it hits the water, I'm ready. Mostly ready anyway. <laughs> okay, so now you've made your cast. What happens next? A lot of things could happen. <laughs> You could just let the fly sit there until the rings dissipate. If you got a sinking fly, you could let that fly sink for a while. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we could get into, but right now we're just gonna keep it simple. So, that fly hits the water, you're gonna drop your rod tip all the way down to the water, maybe even in the water. The reason being is you gotta keep all the slack out of the system. So you wanna pull on the line and you want your fly to move. If you keep the rod tip even a few inches above the water, what's happening is every time you pull on that line, the line is bouncing on the water, the rod tip is bending, and a lot less energy is getting transferred to the fly. So your fly's not swimming. Really important with poppers, because you really want them to pop, and they won't pop if you got too much slack in the system. So tips down, strip, 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 what kind of strip you're going to do is really just going to depend on what the fish want on that particular day. Some days you slam the fly down and start stripping immediately as fast as you can. The fish charge out and grab it. Other days you got to let the fly sit. You got to let the fly sink. Maybe a couple of quick strips and a pause. Maybe a lot of long slow strips. It really just kind of depends on the day and that's something that's learned over time as you get more experience. We can get into that in a whole nother video. <laughs> so we're gonna start stripping that line, stripping that line, whatever cadence we're using, and then all of a sudden it stops. A lot of times it's a rock or a stick, but 
Sometimes it's a fish. And if it's a topwater fly, you'll know it's a fish because you'll see the explosion when the fish grabs it. So what do you do? What do you not do? Is <laughs> jerk that rod tip up. <laughs> it's a natural reaction for everybody when they see that fly disappear or when they feel that tug on the other end of the line to jerk up with that rod tip. And bass fishing, you really, really, really want to try to do a strip strike. And the strip strike is basically just continue with the motion that you've been using to move the fly with maybe just a little bit more aggression ugh, to bury that hook. There's several reasons you do that. Number one is you get much more power to actually set the hook. The hook will penetrate the fish's mouth a lot better by a straight pull than it will when you jerk up. When you raise the rod tip, you've gotta get the rod bent, you've gotta get the line tight, there may be some stretch in the line. It's really hard to set the hook like this on a bass. But if you set that hook with that strip, you're a lot more likely to hook them. Now, the thing is, there's only one thing worse than doing a trout set, and that's doing a trout set halfway then dropping your rod and trying to do a strip strike because once you raise your rod tip and drop it you just created even more slack in the system so if you raise the rod tip just go for it do the bass masters world championship hook set and see if you can get that line tight and see if you can get that hook to penetrate it'll work sometimes it's not the preferred technique but it's better than introducing more slack so just go for it <laughs> All right, so now you got the bass on, he's jumping, going crazy. What do you do? Get him on the reel, right? No. <laughs> I mean, if you can get him on the reel without fumbling, without forgetting to do something else, sure. But more often than not, the fish that I see get lost are because somebody was too concerned about getting them on the reel. If you can, that's great. What's most important is keeping that line tight and keeping that bass out of the structure. When you hook a bass, he's gonna come out of the structure, grab your fly, and he's gonna immediately head back in. So the most important thing is keeping him out of there. Fortunately, we're usually fishing with heavier tippets, so you can put some pressure on them. We're fishing with a little bit heavier rod. You can put some pressure on them, and what you wanna do is get them out into some open water. Your chances of landing them are a lot better in open water than there are in a bunch of structure. All right, so you got them out, you're in the open water, Everything's great. You're about to get them in the boat. Now, this is where it can go wrong once again. Small fish, yeah, no big deal. You can just hoist them up, grab the leader, or if they're really small, just hoist them up with your rod. With the bigger fish, a lot of times you'll see people lipping them, which works well if you know what you're doing. But even if you know what you're doing, there's a pretty good chance of losing fish right at the boat when you try to lip them. So bring a net. It just makes everything a lot easier. Even with the smaller fish, I tend to net them anyway. That way you can keep them in the net. If you're just gonna release them, you just take the hook out, you immediately drop them back in the water. Everything's good. If you do wanna get the fish in and take a photo, you're much more likely to have that happen if you net the fish, take the hook out, keep the fish in the water, Get everything ready for your photo. Bring the fish into the boat or pick the fish up out of the net if you're waiting. Now bass aren't as delicate as a trout, but you still wanna be careful when handling them. Get your hands wet, hold them gently, don't squeeze them, and please, please don't do the jaw jacking thing that all the Bass Buster guys did for years because you can break the fish's jaw. So I prefer to just hold them just like you would a trout. One hand around their tail, one hand underneath their belly, and hold them up for the picture, get them back in the water, let them go. Now I know we've just kind of touched the surface of a lot of these subjects that I really want to get a little bit deeper into, but I didn't want the video to be an hour long. So if you guys have any questions, any requests for future videos, I'm going to make some more. I already mentioned a couple of subjects I want to cover. Just leave me some comments down there. Once again, I thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. You can hit that little notification bell. And as always, good luck on the water.